This is a Security Weekly production. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. This episode of Hack Naked TV is brought to you by IT Pro TV. With IT Pro TV, you gain access to the most important tools needed to prepare for your IT certification. IT Pro TV has thousands of hours of up to date, high quality video content. Course topics include CCNP. CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner, Ethical Hacking, Virtualization, Cryptography, SSH, Microsoft Server 2016, and more. You can stream their courses live and on demand to your Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, PC, or mobile device. They have one low monthly subscription price and you can cancel at any time. Corporate pricing is available and clients include Harvard, MIT, UCSD, Stanford, and more. Check out itpro.tv forward slash hack naked to upgrade your brain with the most popular IT certifications. Use the code hacknaked30 for a free seven day trial and save 30% off for life. Welcome to another episode of Hack Naked TV. We're recording today on May 31st, 2016. I'm your host, Aaron Lyons. Today, I'm going to be covering some more on the Bangladesh bank heist in the SWIFT network. I'm going to be looking at the recent Google versus Oracle trial and more. So the Bangladesh bank heist, Ugh, won't this ever end? Well, they continue to waffle about whether or not insiders were involved. In a recent statement from a bank official, they're alluding now that there was an insider involved. Counter to what they said a week ago, that there was an in insider involved. And in line with what the FBI said about three weeks ago, that there was an insider involved. No one knows anything. There isn't any more information than that currently. And the report that can provide any information is not going to be publicly available for another two to three weeks. Well, in related news, Symantec has been reviewing the malware that was used in the Bangladesh heist. And has found similarities between it and malware that was used in a similar heist against the Philippines by bank that stole about $1 million. While this is interesting, uh, I'm not convinced that code reuse indicates that the same group was behind both heists. I've reused code off the internet. Stack Overflow, anyone? You know, and similar code isn't attribution. So... Regardless, in response to all of these revelations about these heists, the SWIFT network has released a plan for increased security for its customers. This plan is going to include tougher security requirements for the bank software that interacts, interfaces sorry, locally with the SWIFT network, new audit and certification standards, and the use of tools to detect fraudulent transactions over the SWIFT network. Now, like we've discussed in what this plan is detailing, all of these heists have used good credentials. They've, they've uh, broken into and taken over computers on the local bank's network and used you know, credentials that they've stolen to access the SWIFT network. And all of this plan from the SWIFT network is about the banks increasing their security on their own networks. This isn't improvements to the SWIFT network itself. It's about the banks securing themselves. So just last week, in other news, Google has won its case versus Oracle about whether the use of the Java APIs violates copyright. This case has been going on for about six years. And just last week, the federal jury found that the use of APIs was covered under fair use. Now, the entire personal computer revolution was built on API reuse. And if engineers had not been able to reverse engineer the APIs that were used in IBM's BIOS back in the day, we'd never have IBM clones, and the personal computer revolution would have very likely never have happened. And this would be a completely different conversation that we're having right now. Yeah, I'm sure the case isn't over yet. It's been dragged on six years, and I'm sure Google... 
I'm sorry, I'm sure Oracle will appeal appeal this decision. They are seeking nine million dollars in damages from from uh, Google, and if they won this decision, they could go after any company that's using their APIs to interact with Java for licensing fees. That's a big cash cow. I'm sure they're not going to let that just fall to the wayside without a more of a fight. You might recall last month that we t reported that Rob Graham would be starting another scan. Well, he's just kicked it off. This scan is going to be connecting to all 65,535 TCP ports. It's going to open, open a connection, wait a few seconds for a banner. If it doesn't get a banner, it's then going to send an SSL hello message. Now, this scan is going to be coming from the IP range 209.126.230.702.1. Now, Rob's going to be running this scan for a week. And remember, it's just a scan. If you're connected to the internet, you're going to get scanned. A scan is not an attack. And in this case, it's legitimate security research that's going to benefit us all. Take a deep breath. It's just a scan. You're not getting hacked. For the better part of this year, I've been ranting about ransomware. And I'll probably continue to rant about ransomware and how your only real protection from it are good, regular backups. Well, CSO Online has published a very good article about what a good backup actually is. And they cover important things like versioning, testing, and using an off-site back, off backups. It's definitely worth a read, and they are much more articulate about the topic than I am. That's it for this episode of Hack Naked TV. Thanks for listening. Send us your thoughts at the show at hacknaked.tv. Love to hear from you. Hack Naked.